Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to the greenhouse effect and why it's important. Some of you may have been in a greenhouse at some point, and the first thing you probably noticed was how much warmer it was inside the greenhouse. The reason for that is the glass that the greenhouse is constructed of. We know that the sun gives off all types of electromagnetic energy, and because it's so hot, it's able to give off very powerful short wave energy, mainly in the form of visible light and ultraviolet rays. The glass of the greenhouse allows the short wave energy to come in and to heat up the greenhouse. Now at night when the sun sets, the greenhouse and the earth start to radiate, start to give off some of the heat they absorbed during the day. Because the greenhouse and the earth are cooler than the sun, they give off long wave electromagnetic energy, which is weaker, and it's mainly in the form of infrared energy. Some of this infrared energy is able to escape through the glass of the greenhouse, but most of it gets trapped inside by the glass. The trapping of this infrared energy is what heats the greenhouse and keeps it warm. A very similar process happens on the Earth. We know that the Earth's atmosphere is made of four distinct layers, and within these layers there are certain gases. For example, we talked about the ozone layer the other day, and today we're going to be looking at a layer that's made up of what we call greenhouse gases. The ozone layer, as we talked about, will block most of the ultraviolet light or ultraviolet rays coming from the sun. And that's a good thing because we know that UV rays cause skin cancer. Some of the UV rays and the visible light are able to get through the ozone layer and through the greenhouse gases and they get down to the Earth's surface. Now, during the day, the Earth absorbs this heat, and that's what warms up our planet. At night, when the sun sets, the Earth will re-radiate the energy that it absorbed. And again, because the Earth is cooler, the energy is in the form of long-wave infrared energy. Now, just like the glass of the greenhouse, the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere trap this infrared energy that's trying to escape. And they trap the energy and it keeps the energy closer to the earth. You can think of this just like a blanket that you might use in the winter time, right? We use a blanket because it keeps the heat trapped close to our bodies. It keeps our bodies warm. Now this greenhouse effect is a natural process, right? It has nothing to do with humans. It's been happening for billions of years. And it is vital, it is essential that this happens. Because if this infrared energy were allowed to escape, the Earth would get extremely cold during the night. This actually happens on the planet Mercury. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere. There are no gases surrounding it. So during the day, the temperatures get up to around 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, so it receives the hottest energy. But at night, all of that energy goes back out into space. And so at night, Mercury drops down to almost negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a huge temperature difference. That's over a thousand degree temperature difference between daytime temperatures and nighttime temperatures. In fact, Mercury gets so cold it's actually colder than the clouds on Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is much farther away. Right? Jupiter is way out in the outer part of our solar system, but it stays warmer because of gases that trap heat. Now, let's take a look at what these greenhouse gases are. There are three of them. The first one is carbon dioxide, CO2. Carbon dioxide is the number one man-made greenhouse gas. Now, obviously, humans and animals, when we exhale, we breathe out carbon dioxide. That's not what we mean, though, when we say that it's a man-made greenhouse gas. What we mean is that we create this gas. 
when we burn fossil fuels, when we burn coal, oil, and gas to make energy, they release carbon dioxide. As human population has grown, we've needed to create more and more energy by burning more and more fossil fuels. The second greenhouse gas is water vapor. Yeah, that's right. All the water in the air that's around us all the time is actually a greenhouse gas. Water vapor happens to be very good at trapping infrared energy. So at night, when the Earth is trying to release the energy, water vapor actually traps it. The third greenhouse gas is a gas called methane. Methane comes from a number of places. Um, it's released by rice plants. So we know that in Asia, rice is one of the staples of their diets. They have a lot of rice growing. So rice releases methane. Methane is also released by cows. You might know that the stomach of a cow actually has four chambers to it. And when cows digest food, the gas that's created is mainly methane. The third source of methane actually comes from decaying organisms. When creatures die and their bodies decay, they release methane. So these three gases make up the greenhouse gases. So in this diagram, this gray layer here, these are the greenhouse gases. They let the shortwave energy come in from the sun. They let some of the infrared energy go out back to space, but they trap and reflect a lot of that outgoing energy. Now you've probably heard of global warming or climate change, and this is linked to the greenhouse effect. Because what we think has been happening is we think that this layer of gases has been getting thicker. And just like in the wintertime, when you might put on a thicker blanket, sometimes we may put on two blankets, the thicker that layer is, the more heat gets trapped. Some of the causes of this global warming or this climate change have to do with things we've already talked about. So burning fossil fuels. As we need to create more and more energy, we burn more and more fossil fuels. This is making that greenhouse blanket thicker. The second cause of this is deforestation. As there are more people on Earth, we need more land for building homes. We also need more land for farming because we need more food. The fastest way to get rid of a forest is to burn down. We know from previous units that living things are made of carbon. So when you burn down forests, you are releasing huge amounts of carbon. The third cause of climate change has to do with increased farming. As there are more people and more mouths to feed, we need to create and to grow more food, have more crops. So we talked about the rice and the cows creating methane. The fourth cause of climate change is something that was only discovered in the last few years, and scientists are very alarmed by this. But we said before that when creatures die and their bodies decay, methane is released. The area up by the North Pole, northern Canada, northern Russia, Siberia, that ground is frozen all year long, and that's called permafrost. Locked in within that ground are the remains of organisms for the last two or three billion years. And the decaying bodies have been locked inside that permafrost. Scientists have discovered that the permafrost is starting to thaw. It's starting to warm up. And as a result, huge amounts of methane are getting released. There are actually places in Siberia where you can walk around with a lighter or a flame, and if you hold it close to the ground, it will shoot up as bursts of methane escape from the ground. So this is something that's been in the news just in the last couple of years. Uh, there is concern that this may end up being the number one cause of global warming as the ground continues to thaw and more and more methane is released. So after you watch this video, you're going to go off and you're going to do some exploration of some of the other causes of climate change. And more importantly, you're going to take a look at some of the effects that might happen. See you tomorrow.